We don't need a monster for a daughter. We don't need a monster for a daughter. Both parents said this, laughing joyfully. The grandparents were stunned by the cruel words thrown at me. After a while, trembling with anger, they managed to squeeze out their furious voices. Then we'll take her in. The grandmother gripped my hand, which was shaking from crying, tightly. From that day on, I never returned to that house. It was the grandparents who took me in. After that, I was able to live peacefully. And then, ten years later, one day, a suspicious person appeared in front of the new house my grandparents had built. Who are you guys? Dressed in shabby clothes and with a mean-looking face. I thought they looked familiar and then realized they were my parents. You're living in quite a spacious house now. It was tough to find this place. Can't you let us live here? Our house has become too cramped. I frowned at my parents, who laughed carelessly. Then, I clearly retorted. How selfish can you guys be? It's unbelievable. After calling someone a monster and mistreating them, you just abandon them and come back like nothing happened. Go back now. This is trespassing. My parents looked at me in surprise. I used to be timid and always watch their moods, but I'm not the same person anymore. There's no way I'm letting them do whatever they want here. I reached for the emergency button to call the security company. My name is Nicole Anderson, 22 years old. I work in the beauty industry and live with my grandparents. I don't have parents. To be precise, when I was in elementary school, I was abandoned by my parents. It was all because of my face. I have burn scars on my face. I was scalded in an accident, and the scars remained. Because of this, my life changed completely. I was called a the monster by my parents every day. As a child, all I could do was cry. But now I think about it, it wasn't the burns that changed my life. It was a tragedy to have been born to those parents in the first place. As I recall my childhood, I always felt hungry. There was no money at home. It was because my father kept changing jobs. He would cause trouble at work and quit soon after. Then he would spend his days idly gambling. While my father was unemployed, my mother sometimes worked at a bar. My mother was quite beautiful and always boasted about being popular with men. She used to say that she was the number one hostess when she was single. But like my father, she wasn't suited to working. She worked a little and then, like my father, quit soon and indulged in gambling. Therefore, of course, they didn't take care of me. At mealtimes, only instant noodles were placed on the table. And I had to pour hot water and eat by myself, a habit since my early childhood. There was hardly any other food, and I was always hungry. Things changed when I was in the fourth grade of elementary school. One day, I went out with my mother to the supermarket, where a turning point came. There, by chance, we met an old acquaintance of my mother's. They talked for a while. And then the acquaintance lady looked at me with interest and was surprised. Oh, your daughter? She's grown so much, and she's very cute. She looks just like a model. My mother's face was full of smiles when she heard that. It seemed that an idea had occurred to her at that moment. My parents discussed, and before I knew it, I was registered at a child model agency. After attending a few auditions, work started coming my way. I modeled children's clothing for a small apparel store and appeared in local TV commercials. When the money was deposited, my parents were very pleased. The meals that had been only instant noodles became luxurious. And the clothes that had been secondhand became branded. What made me happiest was that my parents started treating me with smiles. Previously, they had been gruff and seemed uninterested in me, a child but they became kind as I started working. I was happier about that than being able to eat to my heart's content. My parents were pleased, 
and I was happy. But it didn't last long. Fortunately or unfortunately, I became popular as a child model. Taking advantage of that, my parents kept getting me more work. Eventually, because of the schedule, I couldn't participate in school events. I had no time to do my homework and couldn't keep up with my studies. Of course, I was also tired. But thinking that my parents were happy, I pushed my small body to its limits and did my best. As time went on, my workload increased. My parents were still pleased, but fatigue was accumulating in my body. At that time, my parents bought a new car and started traveling to tourist spots all over the country in luxury. Of course, I had work, so it was just the two of them who went. I would go to the site by myself, finish the shoot, and then head to the next site alone. The luxurious meals we used to eat together gradually turned back into instant noodles I ate alone. That was sad for me. Hey, mom, dad. Can I take a break from work? I want to go to school and eat with everyone again. When I muttered this, my parents argued back. What are you talking about? Now is the time to earn. Work is more important than school. Don't worry, we're having a good time with the money Nicole earned. But forget about that, you need to work. Now I understand. My parents never loved me. They only saw me as a golden goose, a source of money. Eventually, I became a sixth grader. But my days were still filled with work, and I was constantly tired and sleep-deprived. Then, one day, an accident happened. It was while I was trying to eat instant noodles during a break in a photo shoot. As usual, I went to the studio's kitchen to boil water. Holding the kettle was fine, but due to my sleep deprivation, I stumbled and fell. Ah. The boiling water from the kettle spilled over and splashed onto my face. It's hot. Someone, help me. Overwhelmed by the pain, I screamed. The photoshoot staff quickly came to my aid and took me to the hospital. I don't know if a nurse called them, but by the time I was treated, my parents had arrived. Unfortunately, the water had splashed on my face. I had suffered severe burns on my face. I spent some time wrapped in bandages and had to keep going to the hospital. A few weeks later, the time came to remove the bandages. My parents watched anxiously from behind. When the bandages were removed, I was in severe shock. Horrible, scar-like burn marks had remained. I broke down crying, but my parents were even more shocked than I was. Doctor. This isn't Nicole's face. You have to make it look better. The doctor sighed at my mother's scream. I've done everything I could. Even if we do more, it will only lighten the scars a little. Hearing this, my parents turned pale. The real hell was just beginning. Naturally, I had to cancel all my child modeling jobs. With these burn scars, a job that depended on looks was obviously out of the question. More than that, what really crushed me was my parents' attitude. This was unexpected. We still have the new car loan to pay off. Yes, we were planning to have you work for much longer. And now, with this ugly face. You're no use to us like this. My parents harshly blamed me for the accident, citing my carelessness. And then they became as cold as ice. They must have decided I had no more value to them as a product. I couldn't say anything back. It was all my fault. My mother and father didn't need me with this face. It was sad, but there was nothing I could do. Then one day. When I returned from school, I heard my parents whispering in the living room. They hadn't noticed I was back yet. I inadvertently hid in the shadows and listened. I'm so disappointed in her. I thought she could earn more money. Now she's just a money eater, costing us food and tuition. Right. We even thought about getting her into night work, but with that face, it's impossible. Totally useless. 
but we still have the car loan and other debts, so she'll have to work somehow. Even if we have to fake her age. Maybe she could deliver newspapers? That won't earn much. She's of no use, we might as well dump her somewhere. If we leave her in front of a child welfare institution, someone might pick her up. I was stunned by my parents' words. It was indeed sad to have burn scars on my face. But I was a little happy to be able to cancel the modeling job. It meant I could go to school, study, and play with friends, which was a relief. But my parents had no sympathy for my feelings. Instead, they were thinking of abandoning me. As I tried to leave the place with trembling legs, I accidentally made a noise. My parents noticed me and came out of the living room. Even seeing my pale face, their expressions remained cold. You heard us? Then that makes things quicker. Get out of this house. That's right. It's hard to support you. Now we can finally get this burden off our shoulders. How could you? It was just too cruel. Other kids my age lived with kind parents, ate warm home-cooked meals, and enjoyed studying, sports, and playing with friends. In contrast, I was used and thrown away like trash. Tears naturally started flowing from my eyes at my pitiful situation. But my mother showed no mercy to me. Crying is useless. Do you understand? Answer me. To me, my parents looked like monsters. I was speechless, and just then, the front door opened. And unexpectedly, two people walked in. They were an elderly couple. We were worried, and it seems we were right. What are you doing, Victor, Emma? The elderly man called out my father and mother's names. Then, my father let out a displeased voice. What? Dad, Mom. Why are you here? I recognized the couple, they were my paternal grandparents, though I had rarely met them. I had heard that my grandparents and father never got along well. Born into a wealthy family as an only son. My father went astray influenced by bad friends from school. He got into trouble often. Despite my grandparents' efforts, my father never changed. Even as an adult, he hardly worked and spent his days visiting bars and nightclubs. Then suddenly, he married my mother, a nightclub worker. Which made my grandfather angry enough to kick him out of the house. Since then, they hadn't interacted much. But it seemed they still cared about me, their granddaughter. Grandma. Grandpa. When I muttered, my grandparents narrowed their eyes kindly. I was surprised when I saw Nicole in a clothing store flyer. We haven't heard anything from Victor and Emma. And I was worried about how Nicole was growing up. Victor, you are the worst. From the time you kicked her out of the house, no. You haven't changed at all since back then. Emma too. How could grown adults make their child work? And to top it off, you discard her when she's no longer of use to you. What are you even saying? My father made a face as if he was annoyed by my grandfather's lecture. Shut up. You just show up out of nowhere and start preaching. My mother retorted with a smirk. There's nothing we can do. Nicole's face is ruined now, she has no more value to us. Don't joke around. What do you mean no value? Nicole is not an object. She's so thin, haven't you been feeding her properly? And these marks on her face, are they injuries? Poor thing. You are unfit to be parents. Ganging up and saying such horrible things to a child. Have some shame. After scolding my parents, my grandmother hugged me tightly. I was shocked as I had hardly ever been embraced by an adult. Tears began to fall from my eyes again due to the warmth of her hug. My mother, unconcerned, distorted her face and spouted vile words. If we're unfit as parents, Nicole is unfit as a child. 
Her only asset was her face. It was her duty as a child to earn money with that face and give it back to us. In this world, it's all about the face. Understand? If you have a good face, you can earn money. But Nicole, now ugly, is worthless. Useless. My grandparents were furious at my mother's words. How could you say such things? We don't need a monster for a daughter. We don't need a monster for a daughter. My parents said this, laughing. My grandparents were stunned by the harsh words thrown at me. After a while, trembling with anger, they managed to speak. Then we will take her in. My grandmother held my crying hand tightly. From that day on, I never returned to that house. I don't remember much about what happened after that. There was an exchange between the adults, and I was officially taken in by my grandparents. My grandmother served delicious meals and provided me with a warm blanket to sleep in comfortably. That was the happiest thing for me. I was just about to enter middle school, so I enrolled in a middle school near my grandparents' home. Finally, I was able to live a life like a normal child. I was behind in my studies, but my grandparents hired a tutor for me, and I managed to catch up. Then, I thought about making friends and playing. But I was concerned about the burn scars. Maybe everyone would dislike me. I was secretly afraid of being called a monster, like my parents had. But I didn't need to worry. My grandparents, through their connections, called a makeup artist who used to work in theater to our home. She was a beautiful woman who applied makeup to me. When the makeup was done and I saw my face in the mirror, I was surprised. The burn scars had disappeared. It was like magic. See, you look beautiful, right? It's okay, have confidence. Hearing this, I couldn't help but shout in excitement. Yes. Amazing. Thank you, big sister. Just as she said, I gradually regained my confidence. I had always been timid, worrying about upsetting my parents but I became more assertive over time. I made friends at school and began to play energetically. My grandparents watched me happily. Thanks to them, I could enjoy every day. I was immensely grateful to my grandparents. Then, ten years passed. I am now a working adult. Although the burn scars on my face remain, they have significantly faded. Thanks to my improved makeup skills, they are almost unnoticeable. My grandparents are still healthy. After that, they built a new house. My grandparents owned several apartments and had rental income. They had some financial leeway, but living as a couple. They dismissed the idea of giving money to their son, my father. They planned to live modestly in their old age and thought about donating any extra money but they decided to think about my future when they took me in. As the old house was getting worn out, they built a new house so we could live comfortably. That's why we now live in a new house of 2,000 square yards. One night, I overheard my grandparents talking with troubled faces. Lately, there have been suspicious people lurking around our house. They look like a ragged family. Maybe they're beggars? I saw them again just now, and it's kind of scary. Really? That's creepy. Worried by what I heard, I decided to go outside and check. In such a peaceful residential area, it was strange to have suspicious people. I thought that by checking outside, my grandparents would feel relieved. But the moment I stepped out of the gate, an unexpected sight caught my eye. It was a family dressed in shabby clothes. They must be the suspicious people my grandmother mentioned. A middle-aged couple and what seemed to be two young girls were leaning against the wall of our house, muttering something. Their presence was eerie, but more than that, I was upset by their loitering around someone's house. As I approached, I heard a shout, Nicole. Why would these people know my name? Curious, I called out. 
Who are you? Then, a familiar cajoling voice responded. Oh, Nicole, have you already forgotten? It's your mom and dad. What? Upon closer inspection, the middle-aged couple were indeed my parents. They had aged significantly since that time. Perhaps it was due to their gaunt faces. You're living in quite a spacious house now. It was tough to find this place. Since then, our family has grown, and our house has become too cramped. So, we want to live here. Beside the laughing father stood two girls. One about middle school age and the other about elementary school age, both expressionless. Both were startlingly beautiful. Had my parents had children after I left? Does that mean these are my sisters? I couldn't believe it right away and showed my distrust. Whether the family has grown or not, it has nothing to do with me. How audacious it is for them to suddenly show up like this. I shouted loudly. How selfish can you be? I can't believe it. After calling someone a monster and mistreating them. You just abandon them and come back like nothing happened. Leave right now. My clear retort seemed to surprise my parents. It felt unreal, considering I used to be so timid around them. Nicole. How can you say such things to your parents? I thought only your face was ugly, but your heart has turned ugly too. You're not my parents. At that moment, the front door opened. Alerted by the commotion, my grandparents came out of the house. Victor, Emma. Grandma, Grandpa. These people just showed up out of nowhere and are saying they want to live here. It's unbelievable that they just waltz back into our lives like this. My father quickly interjected after my comment. What are you talking about, Nicole? This is my parents' house. We have a right to live here. My grandfather responded with an exasperated look, trying to reason with my father. Unfortunately, you no longer have that right. What? We've disowned you. If you cross this threshold, I won't stand for it. Father yelled back at the firm statement from my grandfather. What? As if that's going to stop us. My parents persisted stubbornly. The girls stood there with complex expressions, while my parents shook the gate forcefully. What are you doing? This is trespassing. I'm calling the security company. I said this as I pressed the emergency button to call the security company. It was good that we had installed it due to the larger house and the need for security. Soon, a loud alarm sounded throughout the area. Neighbors and passersby began to gather. Seeing this, my parents paled and hurriedly fled. Nicole, are you okay? Really, those two are incorrigible. Yes, I'm fine. But. Something bothered me. It was about those two girls. They said their family had grown, so were they my sisters? I couldn't help but think they must be suffering under my parents just like I did. It left me with mixed feelings. Time passed, and just to be safe, I also spoke to the police and requested patrols around our house. Thankfully, my parents haven't come back since. Life returned to its usual peaceful routine. Then, one day. When I returned from work, I saw unfamiliar people standing in front of the house. I was initially tense, but upon closer inspection, they were still children. They looked familiar. Could it be, those children from that time? The middle school-aged girl and the elementary school-aged girl. Who had been with my parents were there. When they noticed me, the older girl spoke in a small voice. I'm sorry. We have nowhere else to go. So? They looked thin and had dark circles under their eyes. What? What happened? We ran away from that house. What? Please help us. I was taken aback by the sudden turn of events. For a moment, I wondered if they were part of my parents' schemes, but they were still just children. 
I decided to hear them out first. For safety, I didn't invite them into the house but took them to a nearby cafe instead. The older girl's name appeared to be Amy, and the younger one was Sarah. They shared their story about my parents. We were taken from a child welfare institution. Is that so? So they're not your biological children? When I said this, the two nodded. I had been curious about how my parents had been living after I left. Amy explained what had happened. After I left, it seems my parents begrudgingly started working again. However, they soon quit and resumed their aimless, lazy days. Then, planning to find another child who could be their new source of income, they plotted their next move. However, they struggled to have their own children. That's when they scouted cute children at an orphanage to adopt. They chose Amy and Sarah because they were beautiful. They took them in and made them work as child actors and baby models. Telling them, your face is your only asset, they nearly brainwashed them with this idea. But even that did not work out as planned. They couldn't earn as much as they had hoped, even when combining the incomes of both girls. My parents said that even with Amy and Sarah's combined earnings, it wasn't as much as during my peak times. And as they continued to squander money, their finances were always in dire straits. On a whim, they decided to come to this house, thinking to ask for money at first. But seeing how large it was, they thought it would be better to just live here. However, after being turned away by me, they had no choice but to flee back home. The problem came afterwards. My parents are not the type to be discouraged by just that. Once again, they began to think recklessly. They gathered what little money they had and made plans to go to an overseas casino to increase it. I was appalled. It was exactly the kind of plan you'd expect from my parents, who hate working and love gambling. However, Amy and Sarah were an inconvenience to their plan. They were told to stay home and look after the house while my parents were abroad. It seems they've been overseas for several weeks now. And there's neither money nor food left at home. Amy and Sarah, who had been told they didn't need to go to school, were somewhat truant. Because of this, the adults around them, like their teachers, hadn't noticed anything about their home situation. They had been managing to stave off hunger with whatever was in the fridge. But apparently, they had reached their limit. How terrible. After hearing their story, I sighed deeply. They see children as nothing more than a source of income. It was the same as with me, no, it's even worse now. We thought about going back to the child consultation center. But our mom and dad told us not to tell the consultation center anything. We had nowhere else to turn for help, so we came here. Amy spoke in a weary voice. I'm hungry. Sarah's words echoed my own past. I too had lived in that house, always hungry. Thinking about Amy and Sarah's daily life made my heart ache. I couldn't just leave them be. Resolved, I decided to bring Amy and Sarah into my home. Then, I explained everything to my grandparents. My grandmother was shocked but prepared a warm meal for the two girls. My grandfather listened seriously and was just as angry as I was. Amy and Sarah ate their meal with tears streaming down their faces. Seeing this, I was filled with an indignant rage. Grandma, Grandpa. We can't just leave things as they are. What my parents are doing is neglect, isn't it? Let's call the police. My grandparents nodded in agreement. It's inhumane to let young children suffer like this. We need to make sure my parents understand just how terrible their actions are. At my words, my grandparents nodded. Subjecting such young children to this kind of suffering is not what humans should do. We must make sure they fully understand how terrible their actions are. The next day, we visited my parents' house. The house where I once lived was in a terrible state. It was a mess, seemingly not cleaned for years, with dust everywhere. 
We all grimaced. Of course, my parents were not there. It seemed they had not yet returned from abroad. My grandmother sighed deeply. Nothing has changed at all. And to think. They adopted children not to raise them, but to earn money. It's unbelievable. Our anger reached its peak. We called the police and explained the situation. During the police interview, we recounted everything that had happened. According to what I heard, there were reports from the neighborhood. And the staff of the Child Guidance Center also visited from time to time. However, my parents had chased them away. Apparently, they responded defiantly, we are properly raising our children. If you doubt us, we'll sue for defamation. They were ridiculous. After talking to the police in the room for a while, the door suddenly opened. My parents are back. What? Why? My mother and father scream at the sight of the police. There is a hint of tiredness on his face. Looking at the situation, it seems that the plan to increase the money at the casino also ended in failure. The two of them tried to escape in a hurry, but it was too late. Police secured them, and my parents were arrested for abandoning their custody. Hey, what are you doing? Hey, what do you mean, Nicole? Mom, Dad, you guys set us up. At my parents' frantic ranting, I was completely dumbfounded. Set you up? Don't say such ridiculous things. This is the result of your neglect. You've exploited me, Amy, and Sarah all to make your own lives easier. And on top of that, you've hurled nothing but cruel words that crush a child's spirit. You've failed not only as parents, but as human beings. You deserve to be locked up in a cold cell and reflect down to your very bones. Perhaps overwhelmed by my fury, my parents, with twisted faces, did not retort and were taken away by the police. I couldn't imagine them changing their ways easily. But it was far too dangerous to leave them unchecked. With their arrest, I finally felt a moment of relief. I didn't want any more children to suffer because of them. I hoped such parents would disappear, even if just one set. Hoping for this, we left the house. Later, they were sentenced. They received a five-year prison term. The severity of their abuse of the adoption system and their neglect warranted a lengthy sentence. During the trial, my parents supposedly apologized for the wrongs they had done to the children. However, whether they truly felt remorse was questionable. In prison, they reportedly maintained a rather defiant attitude. Because the case became highly publicized, journalists visited my parents. One journalist shared that my parents had even asked for money in exchange for interviews. Even the journalist was astounded by their greed. I was utterly disgusted by how money-grubbing they were. It seems people don't change that easily. All I could do now was to ensure I never involved myself with them again. Amy and Sarah were temporarily placed back in the child consultation center. And later taken in by kind foster parents. Things seemed to be going well for them now, which was a relief. I had a brief chat with Amy and Sarah before they were taken in. This is something I must say. You might have been told many harsh things by them, but it's best to forget. What truly matters isn't appearances, but what's in your heart. Having compassion for others, and never giving up no matter what, those are the important things. If you keep that up, someday, someone will take notice. Just as my grandparents had rescued me from that hellish life. When I first met Amy and Sarah, their expressions were gloomy. But now they are regaining their childlike brightness. Perhaps due to their erratic lives, they had some noticeable skin problems. Which I helped with by teaching them some basic skin care, just some toner and lip balm. But it was effective. Their already pretty features brightened even more. Amy and Sarah were amazed when they saw their faces in the mirror. Wow. Nicole, you're amazing. Thank you. Watching them, I smiled.
Being a makeup artist myself, having been given confidence through makeup at that time. I always hoped I could do the same for others. I truly wished for Amy and Sarah to keep moving forward. My grandparents, smiling gently beside me, reminded me that despite not being fortunate with my parents, I was lucky to have them watching over me. Feeling happy just thinking about it, I still wanted to show my gratitude to my grandparents. Please live a long life. As I spoke, my grandmother laughed and said, of course, and my grandfather nodded with a smile.